talk about stereo tactic radiotherapy. This is a new uh, technique we are doing uh, because uh, uh, stereo tactic radiotherapy has been around uh, at least in Birmingham, not more than five years. Um, so my previous speakers have done fantastic discussion about, um, you know, biopsy and ablation. So they made my job quite easy. But what is the current problem? I think there is um, increasing incidence of these masses because of uh, incidental finding. Uh, and majority of the elderly population, um, uh, patients having lots of comorbidities, uh, in spite of localized disease, quite a lot of patients are actually not fit for general anesthesia or procedures, uh, invasive procedures. Um, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I didn't see something. It's not sure. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Um, and patients who are not uh, fit medically for uh, ablation or surgery, um, you know, for those patients, uh, standard of care is not really clear. What is the optimum? Um, most of these patients will have period of active surveillance. Is that really active surveillance or is it a watchful waiting? Um, so um, traditionally, we've been taught that uh, radiotherapy doesn't, you know, kidney cancers are radio resistant and it doesn't really work. And that's true uh, to some extent. That's what conventional fractionation, where we give two gray per fraction. But for patients who, uh, with stereotactic radiotherapy, we use um, dosages like 26 gray in one fraction. So the uh, mechanism how um, uh, cell death happens is quite different. Um, and there is more and more evidence now available with um, studies that stereotactic radiotherapy is safe, effective, and has low complication rate. Um, so I think, you know, we are fortunate in Birmingham having a, a cyber knife, which is a um, purpose-made stereotactic uh, radiotherapy machine. You can see that um, that's a linear accelerator put on a robotic arm. And um, uh, so it delivers radiation with quite a um, accuracy. So we have now technology to deliver, although I um, uh, you know, accept that this is not available at every center, but there is a linear accelerator and those are quite advanced machines. So we in Birmingham um, essentially uh, have developed technique to deliver that on linear accelerator as well. Um, and it's a, a very effective delivery, highly conformal uh, radiation, and we use up to beams up to 150 beams um, and uh, treatment is outpatient based. It's uh, de delivered in one to three fractions. If we have to fractionate, that means three treatments. We give it in every alternate days over a week. Um, again, it's a um, you know protocol based and it doesn't need skill of um, re interventional radiologist or um, you know um, it is not based on volume. Um, it has low toxicity and excellent outcome. Um, so that slide is, looks busy, but it just to show you that you can see that crude um, local control rates are in the range of around 93 to 100%, so, and toxicity quite low. But all these studies are retrospective, as you can understand when there is a new technique. Um, it has mixed pathologies. Um, again, my previous uh, speakers have discussed about not having biopsies confirmed. So I suppose 20% uh, on average must be benign tumors. Um, so, and um, you know, th th those are the problems with obviously retrospective single center studies. Um, so uh, we believe there is an unmet need um, for patients who have localized biopsy and RCC. Uh, we're not talking about benign lesions or oncocytoma. And we uh, presented this, um, um, data and uh, evidence to our novel pathway, uh, treatment pathway at the QE, 
which uh, you have to submit all the evidence and it gets peer reviewed and then it's approved for the treatment. We have got charities funding, QHB charities fund this treatment um, and we um, have collected prospective data with um, outcomes and quality of life. So that's what I'm going to present today. Um, so essentially we've got a pathway uh, established at QV uh, where medically inoperable patients, if they have a biopsy proven RCC, we can consider SABRE as one of the treatment options. Um, so um, what are the criteria? Um, tumors, yes, not all small renal masses up to six centimeters because uh, this non-invasive ablation is not restricted by the size. We can even treat more than six centimeters, but we have to decide somewhere. And we thought uh, we will uh, be, uh, put that six centimeters because one Australian phase two prospective study of 37 patients uh, took that as a criteria. And why reinvent so that um, so we decided six centimeters. Uh, all patients have to ha uh, be discussed in the urology as well as saber MDT. Um, in the urology MDT, uh, uh, quite a lot of patients have had a, uh, when we discuss these patients, had a period of surveillance. So we have to make sure these uh, patients need treatment um, and where surgery is not possible. So which may be due to very, uh, whatever reason, patient has refused, technically it's inoperable, it's a solitary kidney, you want to preserve kidney function or uh, medical comorbidities and um, ablation is not possible, general anesthesia is not possible. So various reasons. Um, performance status up to two, obviously somebody who is performance status three, probably their comorbidities are so severe that they probably don't need treatment. Um, and obviously we um, see patients and take informed consent, explaining this is a technique new with limited long-term data, but other uh, techniques are not, uh, other uh, options are not possible. And to make sure technically it is possible, we discuss that in the Sabre MDT, as well as that is a governance issue. So that's what we do. So what are the dose fractionations? We use 26 grain single fraction, as I said, but it's mainly for tumors less than five centimeters in size. If it is more than five centimeter, just to be on the safer side, we fractionate. That means we treat on alternate days in three fractions. We use a linear accelerator or a uh, cyber knife. So not all patients are treated on cyber knife machine uh, because cyber knife needs fiducial placement. That means you have to put three gold markers under local anesthesia where the machine tracks intra during the uh, treatment because of the motion of the kidney. Um, while on linear accelerator, we don't need fiducials. There are other ways I'll discuss that. I'll show you a couple of cases. So um, we see them face-to-face uh, -face or telephone with COVID time. We treated eight patients. So uh, we collect prospective uh, toxicity and patient reported outcomes uh, um, two weeks, six weeks, and three monthly thereafter and six monthly after the first year. Um, they have a CT scan like uh, any uh, post-ablation at six months, uh, 12 months, and then 24 months and uh, we do different uh, questionnaires for quality of life. So uh, this is a, a presentation of the first 19 cohort uh, from the UK. I, to my understanding, um, no other center has uh, approval of this treatment or routinely treated. Uh, uh, all patients had a biopsy proven RCC, uh, median follow-up of 12 months because we uh, treated our first patient in April, 2019. Um, all patients uh, uh, fulfilled uh, eligibility criteria, um, and we are in the process of publishing this uh, uh, data. Uh, one patient had two cancers in one kidney. Median age is 76 years. As you can see, uh, all this patient was 82. So um, looking at that table, you can see 75% almost patients or majority of the patients were more than four centimeters in size. Um, although um, few patients did have less than uh, five patients had less than five centimeter, sorry, less than four centimeter, but they had a period of surveillance. So we knew that these patients uh, had uh, increasing size and needed treatment. Uh, majority of the patients had GFR, EGFR of more, more than 30. Only one patient had solitary kidney. 
Um, this is radiotherapy characteristics. So uh, to cut a long story short, um, three patients were, um, uh, sorry, um, uh, 11 patients were treated with three fractions, but eight patients had single fraction treatment. Um, and you can see eight patients were treated uh, on cyber knife, but majority actually 11 patients were treated using uh, linear accelerator and BMAP technique. Um, we usually do initial 4D scan and uh, see, sorry, um, 4D scan to assess movement of the kidney if those patients are treated on linear accelerator and we use abdominal compression device to reduce the movement of the okay. kidney. Um, this is a, a swimmer's plot okay. of uh, um, so you've got 21 year old lady presented to Amy. She's had a recent UTI. Sorry, apologies for that. It's all right. Yes, just need to help other people. Zoom. And then go back on here. And then. Yeah. Close that one. Okay, let's do one thing. 